for many, many years. I hadn't healed from it. And so I said, oh, we need something where we can actually have people come to talk about the trauma and how to get healed and free from the trauma and not just I have all this abuse, now how do I get rid of it? Because there's still a lot of trauma that we carry with us throughout the years that we need to heal from. Let's talk about the broken relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's talk (laughs) about those. Welcome to Birthing Purpose with Lana. Today we have Jennifer Francis. She is the Mm -hmm. author of the book, The Birth of a New Nation. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm glad you came here today to discuss your book. Yes, glad to be here. Yeah. So I know that you grew up in the child welfare system before being adopted. Um, You attended beauty school for cosmetology and med certification for nursing before answering the call of ministry at the age of 25, right? Yes. You're a mother of two boys (laughs) and you have partnered with various churches to volunteer with children and youth throughout your community. Mm -hmm. And your desire has always been to see others come to Jesus Christ by sharing your testimony of faith, hope, and love. Yes. And so because of that, you founded Mana Community Center for Women and Children in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And this mm-hmm. vision came to you in 2016 because you wanted to make a change in your yes, community. Yes, in the community mm-hmm. yes. by promoting unity. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that vision. Um, yeah, so in 2016, it actually used to be called Unite Nations. Okay. Um, so I started it as that. And it was just something that I would do on social media, just um, like promoting unity. I always wanted to see people come together. So I would always just share different things with people um, that basically created an environment for people to come together in unity. So it started off as that. So I always would just share things like that um, in the community. And I did a lot of volunteering in the community as well because I I like to be able to get out and see the community and see who's in the community and not just say, oh, I want to create a space for unity. I actually wanted to be that change as well, not just say, I want to see a change. I want to be the change. So I always like to volunteer as well because it helps me get out and actually see different things that actually need to to take change in the community. So that was one of the ways I was able to do that. So at Manor Community Center, what are some of the things you would have the people come together and do? So I have a lot of resources that I put up there. Um, I have like things like my book up there. I have um, a lot of nonprofit things that I'm working on right now. I have a haircutting. So I kind of combined it, all of my different experiences and kind of Um, I'm using that to be able to branch out and to help other people in the community in that kind of way. So like cosmetology, um, I want to be able to give free haircuts to uh, children and youth that are in the foster care system. Um, I've I've felt like that was my way of giving back. So that's one of the one of the things that I have that I'm working on. Um, Another thing is I have all kinds of resources for people who have been abused. Um, I talk about that a lot in my book as well, how um, I was abused growing up and in basically every way possible, physical, uh, mental, emotional, sexual, spiritual. I went through a lot of abuse. So I have a lot of resources on the website as well as to um, how people can get help if they need help. Mm. Um, Let me see what else is on there. I'm in the middle of like recreating it right now. So it's always something new that God is adding to me. So I'm like, okay, oh, I got to do this, got to do that. Right. Um, but, but those are some of the things. Oh, and then the other big, um, the other big thing that I've been doing for the past, well, well since 2018 is a trauma workshop mm. that I absolutely 
is so near and dear to my heart that I feel like is going to touch a lot of people's lives and change a lot of people's lives um, because it talks about um, the trauma aspect. I know a lot of times we hear people talk about the abuse that was done, but not necessarily the trauma that they still deal with afterwards. So a lot of times, like I'll use me in a, as an example, I went through all of the abuse back when I was eight years old up until I was almost 16. But after I got out of the situation, I was still carrying that trauma for many, many years. I hadn't healed from it. And so I said, oh, we need something where we can actually have people come to talk about the trauma and how to get healed and free from the trauma and not just I have all this abuse now, how do I get rid of it? Because there's still a lot of trauma that we carry with us throughout the years that we need to heal from. And so the workshop is a safe environment for people to come together and talk about it's not recorded. It's not, you know, a lot of times we have events and it's recorded, it's pictures and, you know, and I, I want to keep it private for people so people can come and really share and heal. And so I, I just love it. It hasn't gone where I would like to see it. Or I should, I should say it hasn't reached the people that I would like to see it reached yet. But I know that God has something special for it. So I'm just being patient and faithful and what I know he's given me. Even if one person shows up, that's okay for me because that means one more person is being free from the yeah. trauma. And are your services so. free? Free. Oh, free. They're free. They're oh, free. They're kind free. Of have a little marketing savvy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get the word out, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, it, it's happen. It's gonna happen. Amen. <laughs> well, let's talk about your book, The Birth of a New Nation. And mm -hmm where you take readers through a journey of your experiences with abandonment, mm -hmm. uh, childhood abuse, uh, marriage, divorce, single parenting, broken relationships. So what made you decide to put all of this into a book? Oh, let's see. It was probably about five years ago. It took me five years to write this book. Um, mm -hmm only because there was a lot of trauma and things that I had not healed from. So I found a lot of times I would start it, I would write and it would be too much for me to continue. And I would be like, ooh, I don't wanna touch that right now. I don't wanna talk about that. Or I would write it and I, I had realized one time I was writing and when I went back to read it and I was like, all right, God, I'm ready to get this out. I'm ready, it's time. And he was like, go back and read it, read what you wrote. So I go back and I read it. And I noticed I was talking about, a lot about she, her, like it was, it was in like a third person type of thing. Whereas there are books where they're talking like, like that or whatever, depending on the story. But this was a, this is like a biography in a way, like this is my, te well, my testimony, I should say. So I should be talking about, I was, you know, went through this you know, I did, I did this, I was healed from this, but it was like, she was going through this and. You know, so I had realized, oh my gosh, like I'm not even identifying yet that it's me. And so I had to really go back and, and take some more time to heal. So it took me five years to write this, but I wanted to share my testimony because I wanted people to be healed. That's the number one reason why I wrote this book, because it's so much, it's, it's not a, it's not a lot of uh, chapters, but it is so much that I poured into here. And, but it's not even everything. I didn't put everything into this book. <laughs> is there a reason why you left some things out? Um, I left some things out, obviously, because they're personal, they're very personal to me. Um, one, and then I left some other things out because I wanted to be able to have an open discussion if it ever came about where I, where I could mention, oh, well, this is also something that I've gone through that I didn't mention in the book. And then people are like, oh my God, I didn't get to read that in the book. Tell us more. So it's kind of like a way where people can kind of still get to know more about me without having to have read it all in the book. Okay. So And maybe part two, another book. Yeah. Sequel. Yep. <laughs> it could, yeah. <laughs> Birth of another nation. <laughs> no. Wow. So... Let's talk about the broken relationships. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Let's talk <laughs> about those. <laughs> when it comes to broken relationships, what do you say think, that again? When it comes oh, to sorry. broken relationships, mm-hmm. what do you think was the biggest culprit? Probably seeing my parents broken. Like I came from a broken family, so to speak. Um, I didn't have the mother and father. Um, I didn't see that growing up. I didn't see the consistency of mother and father together. Um, And so growing up, I I didn't get that example. I mean, a lot of people don't, um, and they still don't, not everybody deals with that. But I think for me, that was one of my biggest things. I didn't see how to even have relationships. I didn't know what that looked like, especially being in the foster care system. You go from home to home to home to home. You don't know what stability looks like. So I was always moving moving from home to home to home. And it's like, I don't know how you build a relationship. You know, I turn around and they're like, let's go, you gotta move. They don't want you or they need something, you know, you, you don't fit the criteria or the criteria or, you know, you're too old. I've even had, you know, something like that be said to me, you know, well, they don't, they don't really take 16 year olds because um, I talked about being adopted, but I also went back into the foster care system when I was abused. So I branched out of the system when um, I aged out, actually, I should say I aged out of the system when I was 18. So I went back into the system when I was 16 and there weren't many foster care, uh, foster homes that were available for 16 year olds, but someone was willing to take me. But in the same token, it didn't last very long because they're like, we don't know what to do with those 16 year old. We got little babies. So I've, I've dealt with that as well, too, with rejection. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that that as a uh, seeing that growing up and then uh, becoming an adult. That's that's what looked normal to me after a while. So anytime I got into just say even a romantic relationship, I push people away or I didn't know how to handle things. I didn't know how to communicate. Communication was a huge thing for me. It's still a challenge for me today to communicate. I communicate best in words, writing, (laughs) because I don't know how to quite say how I feel. I know how to write it. So, right. A lot of people struggle with communication, whether they've been in foster care or not. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Communication is so key, though. Yeah. 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 So what was the turning point for you where you said, you know what? I got to get some help. I got to figure this thing out because I need to break these cycles. Mm -hmm. Um, It was after the last um, broken relationship. I was really, really broken. And I was like. God, if you get me, was one of those moments. God, if you get me out of this brokenness, I promise you, I will never turn back to the way that I was and how I dealt with relationships. I promise, I make a vow vow that I will commit my life to you and see relationships through the eyes of you. Jesus. Awesome. And that was my turning point. I'm still journeying in it and learning, yes. but I can say that I have not, um, how do I say it? Well, I'll just say I'm still journeying in it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But that was the turning point. And that was five years ago when I came back well, almost six years ago. Now it'll be six years and uh, April 24th is that I fully committed my life back to Jesus. So. Wow. Good. Yeah. I, you need God to have relationships, um, to be successful. You need the Lord. Yeah. Um, yes. And you need mm-hmm. both people yes, you on the same page. It's hard when one person mm-hmm. is striving to go forth in the things of the Lord and you're hooked up with somebody that's like <laughs> not really interested, you know, mm-hmm deal with mm-hmm. God here and there if they feel like it when it's convenient for them and and maybe not yeah. even and ha uh, and it, 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 it that being on the equally yoke is just not a good place to be um no it's not uh, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's not. Wow. So what is the first thing you did to start your healing process? Um, well, I, I first, I started going back to church. Um, that was number one for me. Um, I had been away from the church for a while because obviously the relationship was not healthy. And of course I chased the man. And so I went, I went wherever the man went and he didn't go to church. <laughs> so I was not in church. So I, the first thing I did was I, I said, I got to get back into church. Mm-hmm. That was the number one thing that, that, I did that began the, the steps to my healing. And then I also took, you know, I took some uh, counseling through my church. Mm. Um, so that was another thing. And then, you know, I really, I really take my vow to God serious. Um, I think we, you know, we talked on the phone previous before, and I, I think I had mentioned that, you know, I have been saving myself for my husband for five years now, awesome. you know, in every way. And, and Born again, virgin. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been five, almost six years now. And <laughs> I'm so proud of that. And it has not been easy. It has been challenging. Um, and of course you have your moments where you're like, oh, that person seems real interested. Interesting. Let me see what they're about. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that I haven't, you know, had conversations with other uh, gentlemen, you know, where I'm seeing, figuring like, oh, that could be potential. But as an actual committed relationship, I have not in almost six years. So, mm-hmm. you know, I take I take my vow very serious. So that, that has been in itself, I think, what has kept me so pure as far as um, my healing goes. Because I, I believe, you know, if you really want to experience true healing, you have to, you have to stay pure, you right. know, and the things that, that you do and how you live your life. And you have to not just, walk, not just talk it, but walk it as well. I think it's important too. If you are healed, then you'll draw mm-hmm. heal people. Um, yeah. Unless you're an empath and you just love helping people, then you draw narcissists and toxicity yep. because you want to be a savior. <laughs> yeah, witchcraft. Right. The devil, right? All kind of stuff. The wrong you, spirit. you just want to help everybody. Mm. You know, you just draw mess. crystals and all that <laughs> stuff. So you put your foot down and say, you know what? I cannot yeah. keep settling. I am the queen mm-hmm. and I That's deserve right. the best because Jesus died That's on the right. cross for me to have the best. And that is yes. not the best. Um, Okay. But until then, you just keep going around circles and circles and circles. And it's so important that we listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He lets us yep. know. He lets us That's know. That's right. A lot of times we just go into denial because we want what we want. Mm-hmm. But if we're really obedient, he spoke and he let us know. Yeah. But it's a point where you're like, you have to be surrendered and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> my will but your will lord you know that's right and that's not always easy because we you know we want our way we want to do what we want to do we think we know what's best you know yeah yeah parenting single parenting oh yes single parenting (laughs) (laughs) say that again single parenting in your book so what is the what is a great takeaway about this? Just one good takeaway that a single parent would get from reading your book. Um, you know what? T- to be honest, I didn't share a whole whole lot about single parenting, which is very strange. Um, <laughs> I think because of the time that I was that I was writing the book, um, there was a time in my life where my boys were with their father. Okay. Because of a situation that happened with my mother. And um, so I, I think during that time, I didn't say too, too much. It was still a little bit of a, you know, like uh, sensitive spot. So, I, I mean, I didn't say too much about them. However, um, I'm trying to think what what's something I can bring out from what I said. I know I said they were amazing. That I love them. <laughs> So as a single in my pride and joy, like every other. Oh, but as a single parent, I talked, you know what? I I did talk a lot about um 
how hard it was to be a, how I still am a single parent, hey, how hard it is to be a single parent. And that time when that time before they went with their father, I was making the dumbest decisions. I mean, to the point where I, I say that because I was thinking about me, you know, and I'm very, 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 very honest and transparent in this book. I literally talk about, you know, just a lot of things that I did that I wasn't proud of as a mother. Um, you know, I was into clubbing. I was young. I was partying. I was drinking. You know, I was having just a ball, you know, and I and I went through that phase where I was like, I don't want to be a mother, mm. you know, and I felt bad because okay. I was like, you shouldn't say that. You know, and I, I felt wrong. And I was like, you shouldn't say that because you are a mother. And and it's not that I didn't love my kids, but it was like, this is so hard that I would literally, I don't want to be a mother anymore. Mm. It, here, you have them. Let me club and have my fun and be a kid again. You know, because we had that woe is me moment where I'm like, well, I didn't get a childhood anyway. So this is my time. And it's like, yeah, well, you made your decisions to have children right. and bring them into the world. And they didn't ask to be here. So now you, now you have to be a mother. Right. So I talk about a lot of where, but you know what, I, 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 what I've learned from a lot of the things that I went through and still learning as a single parent is that I need God. I need his direction. I need the wisdom of God to, to show me, because even in that time when they were, they were away, I learned how to trust God with my children and that they belong to him. Yes, we're just the babysitters, right? Yes, They're yes. Really, his children, and even when we worry about them, God has told me plenty of times. Listen, I, I got your child. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The babysitter, <laughs> just uh, trust in me. You know, I yep. got this. Is already figured out. You know. Mm -hmm. And God is so faithful; He handles everything, whether it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> remove the negative people from their lives. Yep. Just yep. future goals that I felt my child needed to be more serious about. God made sure that happened. I wanted my child to eat healthier. My child mm -hmm. now is uh, acting like he wants to eat healthier than me. And tell me, <laughs> oh, that's not good. And this and that. And I'm like, wow, he, God's really changing and all the things that I prayed about if I just relax and trust mm -hmm. God he just does them one by one so it's like faith building he's like building my faith just trust me trust yeah. me in due season in time I got this don't go ahead of me trying to do things your own mm -hmm. make it your own I've got it I mean he he must uh my, my son's going spiritually everything Amen. so uh, it is difficult and you're right. We definitely need God because he's the mm -hmm. only one that can do it. Yeah. Yeah, yep. definitely. Mm -hmm. So this book, you take this book and you use it in your trauma workshops. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is there a lot of writing that needs to be done? Is there a lot of assignments in your workshops? A lot of reflecting, um, writing, journaling? How does you, what would someone expect when they come to your trauma workshop? Um, so it, it was designed to learn how to communicate. Okay. <laughs> I know we talked a lot about um, before communicating. Um, it was, it's literally designed to, I mean, and you can write to it. There's a um, packet that I put together um, and it consists of resources for um, on trauma, different resources um, to diff for different traumas. Most of the main traumas that I speak about is physical, mental, emotional. I know a lot of times people don't think, well, you can have emotional trauma, but you absolutely can. I was emotionally abused by my adoptive father. In so many ways, and emotional is, you know, they can say something that may make you feel like stupid because, you know, you don't know something or they may be belittle you or, you know, there's all kinds of emotional trauma. What about physical trauma? Tell me a little there's bit physical. That. What does that mm -hmm. look like, the physical trauma? What would that look like? 
for for me? Well, for or you, what do you mean? or for someone that, for anyone. The, the physical trauma? Oh, physical, obviously, beating you up. Um, so physical in that kind of way. So physical trauma would be, you know, hitting, you know, st- physical, like mm-hmm. actual physical, oh, like okay. people who are being abused physically. So, you know, like I've known people who have been abused physically, like they get okay. beat up. Like my, like my mother growing up, I watched her get beat up all the time by men. So like a physical and that kind of aspect. I guess for me, when I was, when you were saying physical trauma, I was thinking of the lasting effect of the physical, like, are they, are they, um, damaged? Well, it can be. Cause like some, I yeah. know someone who was burned by her. Yeah. Mother, and yeah. the trauma left her scarred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that trauma, physical trauma can leave. So there's trauma. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, but they may not have talked about the, how, how to heal from that trauma that happened to them physically. And so I guess it's more of like, they, they may come to the group and they may say, I was beat up every day by my boyfriend multiple times a day. How do I heal from the trauma of that happening? Or some of them may even still be in it. How do I get out of this? How do I, you know? So it's kind of like that safe environment or emotionally, you know, you emotionally abused me when you talked about my weight. You know, that could be emotional for a woman to, to have to experience someone who constantly bullies them. Mm-hmm. So they may need to come in and be like, event, how, how do I heal with the trauma of being called fat since I was a little kid, mm-hmm. you know, and I've always been called names that may be huge to somebody or, you know, the obviously sexual, you know, we have people like me who was sexually abused, who I carried that for many, many years. I didn't let men get close to me in that type of, in, in a type of way where it was intimate, not necessarily physically sleeping with them, but in the intimate way of getting to know me, getting to the deeper parts of me, because to me, that was taken advantage of. So I needed to heal from that. I needed to be able to open up and say the traumas that hurt me. And it's identifying them too, because a lot of people don't know that it's a trauma until they talk about it. And I'd be like, that's a trauma and that needs to be healed. So a lot of times people aren't aware. Do you think that one of the biggest cures to trauma is self-love? It can be. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Because the trauma Absolutely. leaves you feeling less than, mm-hmm. you have a little self-hate, self-blame, shame, yep. all yep. that, right? Mm-hmm. And so when yep. you begin to love yourself again and know what your worth is. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and what's so different too about mine is, you know, you have a lot of workshops that you know, they may talk about trauma, but what's so great about mine, and there may be others, is it's Christian based or, or it's it's a it's a it's built on principles that are biblical. Yes. Like healing and that that's important because you can sit down with a lot of therapists, a lot of counselors, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if they don't know Jesus, can only take you so far. Right. So just need to supernaturally happen. <laughs> yes. So you come to my trauma workshop and it ain't no telling what's going to break off of you. And it's not me, it's God. Like you said, a lot of it is self-love too. Um, and, and it talks about a lot about that too. We're not, it is, and I tell, I like to tell people, this isn't about bashing anybody. This is about coming in and us being able to open up for us. This is about our self-healing, what we need to do for us. Mm-hmm. So how important it is to, confront your abusers how important is it the people that have traumatized you (laughs) that's a good (laughs) how important is that's a good question because you know what i huh yeah how important is that for closure for healing confronting your abusers I can tell you from experience. I'm glad you asked that question <laughs> because, <laughs> because when I went through my, my counseling through my church, when I came back into church uh, about five years ago, one of the things he asked or he asked what I'd be comfortable doing is 
going to her and saying how I felt and saying, you know, because a lot of times we say, well, if only she knew how I felt or if only they knew this and we're sitting and we're talking to these therapists. And, and I was just talking to my friend about this the other day. We're sharing a lot of things, how we feel about the people, but to the people that we actually feel about it to. So it's just like, at the end of the day, I mean, why don't you just go to them and tell them if you can, or if you know, if you feel comfortable enough. So I did, I actually went to her and I sat down and surprisingly, I got a lot of um, answers that I was looking for. Did it necessarily, it gave me some closure. Okay. But it only took me so far Okay. because then I had to come in and do my part exactly. because you can give me closure. You can, you can, or you could give me some type of something that helps me to, to, you know, make me feel better about it. You could say some things, but if I'm not willing to, to accept that, or I may accept it even at that moment, at that moment, I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I know, I know how you feel now. I know what happened. I know this is how you seen it, but I may go home and next week I might be maybe like, I don't forgive you still because that was too deep. And now I have, now I take what they even shared with me and be like, well, why you didn't do this then? Or why you didn't share? So I I have to be able to also do my part and closure. Closure, I feel like is the enemy in a way, because if we are only looking to one person, it's not one person because honestly, we, two people play a role in it. It takes two people, honestly. You know, we both, even, and, and I'm not saying, you did anything to be abused. But what I am saying is if years go by and 25 years go by, you're still holding on to that. You have a choice. You can choose to let it go. You can choose to heal for you because everybody doesn't get closure. Yeah. Right. You know, that person may die. And then what? I was going to say, you going to keep holding on to it. <laughs> or really some people you really cannot confront because they'll just abuse you even more. <laughs> right. You, know, like, you, you, might like, you did this, you did that and that, and they, because of you, maybe, you know, yep. it was your fault. It was this yep. and that. like, they'll never made it worse. Responsi- right. They won't take responsibility for their part. It just would be all you, you, you. So, which like you said, yep. would make it work, add more damage to yep. Yep. Uh, what you're already going through. Yeah. So what can yep. we expect from you in the future like you said you're working on some projects so let's talk yeah 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 um so i'm actually working on well i've been working on a few books Um, (laughs) (laughs) because i'm a writer so i have all kinds of and that's how that's how i express myself the best i feel like um i'm still learning how to verbally communicate um, but I do like to write and I think it's a great way to express myself. So I write, I write, write, write. Um, so one of the things I am working on right now is another book and it is going to actually go with the trauma workshops also. Um, it's a book on trauma. It's called Save the Heart. Um, I like and I, I just, thank you. And I, I think it's just going to be awesome um, because it's really going to get into the the places that are deep within our hearts because a lot of the issues that we deal with are flowing from our heart yes, you know scripture. and yeah. and if we don't if we don't really deal with what's going on inside of us it becomes poison our and so it's really it. yeah so we really got to dig dig in there and pull those weeds out and some yeah mm-hmm. and it's going to talk you know about all the different traumas that I said I talked about and it's really going to go into more detail because like I said it, it could be hard to understand when you say physical trauma and emotional some people don't understand that or even know what that looks like mm-hmm. so this book is really going to go deeper into uh being able to share more of that with people so that people can identify better like oh man like I, I've been carrying that around for years and I had no idea you know so that's one of the things you know, um what are I- the <laughs> I saw this little <laughs> list of trauma. Uh, if you're going through these things, you're most likely to be experiencing trauma. Um, <laughs> so I think a lot of people don't know they're experiencing trauma. 
I didn't have everything on the list, but I did have, <laughs> look, it said, if you're scrolling through social media all the time, there could be a, <laughs> a sign that you're struggling with trauma. If you're shopping to make yourself feel better. I mean, all these little, all these things on there. I have all, <laughs> but I had some of them on there. I'm like, <laughs> trauma. I was like, hmm, I can't remember. I wish I could find that list. Um, but do you have a list that you go through to see, like to um, identify? Or you or people just pretty um, much I mean they already know they traumatized. <laughs> they already know you don't need you mean to, like for the yeah, workshop? Do I have a yeah, list? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I do I do have a uh, a few things, but that's what's so great about the, the workshops as well when people come is you get to learn new ones too. Because I don't I don't know them all. And so when they, people come, I'll be like, ooh, yeah, I've, that's good. That's a good one. Cause I mean, I've I've know that a lot of the traumas that I've gone through, and I've gone through a lot of different traumas just from all of the abuse. So I know a lot of different traumas. Um, I've even been introduced to a few traumas from PTSD that I didn't even know about, just from people that I know that have gone through that. And I'm like, oh, that would be really great to incorporate that. Um, same thing with drug abuse. We don't think people can experience trauma from um, being a drug addict. You know, my mother, my biological mother was a drug addict, you know, her entire life. And so imagine a person coming out of that and being free. Yeah, there's AA and there's all that, but AA ain't talking about, I mean, I don't know. I never really been to an AA, but <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they're talking about how you can heal to be, you know, mm -hmm. free from the trauma that you dealt with. So well, you probably the steps do these steps, but I know yeah. the steps and mm, still. Hi, my name is so-and-so and I admit that I'm, a, I mean, if you're kind of admitting to it still, how can you really let go of it? If you're like not? Your I feel like you're word cursing yourself in a sense. I'm this. yeah you're empowering it it's like no let's say what God says you are God doesn't say exactly you're that's what the devil yeah is. I'm an alcoholic and I'm forever gonna what do they say I'm gonna forever I, be oh no but I, I'm like <laughs> that ain't what my bible says but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> come to my trauma workshop and see this is this is what <laughs> This is this is what would be good, you know, different things like that to be able to get that word out for the trauma work. And I got to do better at trying to get the word out because yeah, I just feel like it would just be a, you know, so powerful to people who really truly can can actually be free from a lot of things they're dealing with and sit and then confessing that you're a drug addict or you've been alcoholic your whole life is just not <laughs> the rate and rate free. free. Yeah. So you've got um, another book coming out. Yes. What else mm -hmm. going on? What's the, what else? Um, I know well, you've been no, updating the website. Yes, I'm updating the website. Um, you know, I'm really getting involved with my church stuff. Um, so a lot, a lot of that stuff is is unfolding right now. I won't share too much on that behalf, only because you know, it's, okay, it's in the making. It's the yeah. yeah. Careful. I, I don't want to share that stuff. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> But there's a lot of that happening right now. Um, no, no love life still. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's coming too. <laughs> so yeah, Speak it. still Speak waiting it. on that. Life and death in the power of the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't say, say that, right? He's right love. here. You know, he's sitting here. I don't know where he ain't here. Life. I'm gonna have someone that really loves me and cherishes me and compromises with me and sacrifices. Amen. Me. With me Amen. in the name of Jesus, speak. Amen. Yes. Where are you at, Lord? He gonna have money. <laughs> <laughs> I'ma love my in law. They gonna love me. You gotta see okay. all that stuff. Amen. Yes, we gonna That's be right. Sacred. Our cups gonna overflow. We gonna overflow. Travel. We gonna have a great <laughs> time. Yes, say it. It's coming. It's coming. It's in the making. <laughs> Yep, you gotta do that. Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a lot of things in the making. Yeah, just gotta be patient. Um, wow. Yeah. So, share your website. It is www.manacommunitycenter.com. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, okay. Mm -hmm. And when is the next workshop? Are you still planning when the next one's coming up? 
Um, I'm still planning. I'm looking at August. Okay. Um, I was gonna. I had one in July that I was going to do, um, but I moved it to August. Um, so it should be in August sometime. Usually, I try to have them the last week in uh, of the month. Okay. Every every other month, I typically do them every other month, and the last week, either that Saturday or that Monday, I try to do it. Okay. Well, hold up so, your book and tell them where they're able to purchase your book from. The birth. So of you can get. Yeah. So you can get my book on the website at manacommunitycenter.com or you can email me uh, contact at jenniferfrancis.org or uh, should still be up on Amazon as well. If you want the. Um, Kindle. What do you call it? At Kindle. Yes. Yes. On uh, Amazon as well. So you just type in birth of a new nation and it should still be up there. Oh, so those are the ways to get it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I thank you for taking the time to share your book, mm -hmm. share your vision, your mission, your workshops, because I know that it will be a blessing and it's nothing like free resources, right? Especially in a time like this. That's right. Coming That's out of right. pandemic, people are having some, they're financially strained and things. So, mm -hmm. and then some people don't even have insurance to pay yeah. for you know, therapists and counselors and things like that. I know plenty of people like that. Yeah. Let's talk about Zoom. For people who may not be in town, is there anything that you can do for them through Zoom? What do you mean? Like for shop through Zoom. Oh, for the trauma workshop? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah that would be an idea. You know, I thought about doing the, uh, a one on one sessions with people as well, because yeah. everyone isn't comfortable with being in a group. Because I know some things can be very um, personal. And so I have I have also I have also thought of that as well. Yeah. So. so for those watching, you want one on one mm -hmm. free trauma yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> you contact. Jennifer yes. Francis at manacommunitycenter.com or contact at jenniferfrancis.com so that dot org. You, dot org sorry dot org <laughs> so that okay. you can get what you need to become healed, healthy, and whole. And then you could turn around and be a blessing to others, just like Jennifer has been. Amen. Oh, God is smiling on you and congratulations on your book and on all your endeavors. And I'll be praying for you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Much success and blessings. Same to you. Thank you. <laughs>